So in today's video, we're going to be tackling a complete electrical panel labeling with efficiency and some fun. Hey, it's Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. <laughs> Today I'm back at my house and we've got an issue here. We've got an issue throughout the entire house. The house was built in 1938 and it's not just the old wiring. It's, it's bigger than that. It's, it, makes it, it makes everything challenging. It makes everything time consuming. I'm just gonna bite the head off the snake today. I'm gonna swallow the worm. Uh, today's the day. Like, if you're a legit electrician and you have a refined technical skill set, you probably don't like doing this. Like, you don't like this job because it's beneath you. I hate to say it, right? It's mundane. It, I'm gonna try to make it easier for you though. And I'm gonna try to muster the patience to execute on this important task. It's a code requirement. Like, if I don't do it, I'm gonna fail inspection. There's no question about it. And so, it's time. It's just, it's time. That's all I can say, it's, it's time. Well, let me, before I, before I tell you what it is here, let me give you a couple of true stories. So, customer calls us. 11 p.m. We don't do after hours or emergency work unless it's for like friends and family. So they call us at like 11 p.m. And what's happened is plumbing has come loose on the second floor bathroom and there's water coming through their dining room ceiling and their ceiling is starting to bow and buckle, the drywall is, and plaster under the, the weight of that water. I mean, you've got like a tub full of water that because the um, tub shoe has been released, it's been, that water's now in the dining room ceiling and it's coming through and it's on the hardwood floors and they're doing ma damage mitigation but the, the problem they're calling us about is that water is in the dining room light fixture. So you've got water and electricity, right? You've got the, the, the risk, the potential of an electrical fire in your hands. The breaker hasn't tripped. They're not sure which breaker it is. So what they do, wisely, they run down to the electrical panel, they flip the main, kill power to the entire house. Right, smart thing to do if you're uncertain about what circuit that is. Unfortunately, they were without air conditioning. By morning, the house was 88 degrees. It's summer, and they still don't know what circuit it is. They've made no progress other than mitigating the water. So now it's time to investigate. See, they wisely shut off all the power to the house because if you flip the switch off, the hot could still be contained in the light and they may not have de-energized, fully de-energized the light even though the light is off. So not knowing what electrical circuit it was in the panel, they're without power all night. Right, and now under um, situation of duress, we've got to identify that electrical circuit and start flipping breakers and running some tests. If you're an electrician watching this video and you're like, why in the world am I watching a video on panel labeling? This is way homeowner. I'm gonna have some tips and tricks. I'm gonna have how to sell your homeowner on it. Is it a cost center for you or is it a profit center? We're gonna talk about pricing and I'm gonna tell a couple more stories that are gonna hold some value when you're talking to your customer. I'm gonna be rewiring the whole house in the near future. The house was built in 1938 and this getting all the panels labeled is gonna allow me to be much more efficient and safe. See, I don't wanna just shut off power in the whole house and have it down for two or three weeks while we rewire this monster. I wanna be more practical and strategic so some life can take place in the house. For instance, we can have power upstairs when we're rewiring the downstairs. We can still sleep in our own beds and not putting the whole family up in a hotel for three weeks. So this is really gonna help. The National Electrical Code is really clear about panel labeling. The National Electrical Code has at least four basic requirements. The labeling in the panel needs to be legible, clear, specific, and distinct. And if I was gonna add an addendum, cannot be occupancy specific. If you're not comfortable with panel labeling immediately, let me show you some anatomy of an electrical panel and we'll just go through step by step so that you know the shortcuts to help you quickly identify circuits. A larger breaker like this, this is a two pole 40 amp breaker. It means it's a 240 volt circuit that draws 40 amps. Here on the panel schedule, it says range. However, I don't have an electric range. So I'm wondering if that's the electric oven or there could be an old range outlet hiding behind the gas range that I need to be on the lookout for. 20 amp circuits are often gonna be 
power in spaces that require a little bit more juice, like kitchens, bathrooms, garages, exteriors, shops, things of that nature, but could also be just general lighting and receptacles around the home. Two pole 30 amp breakers like this are typically water heaters and air conditioners. Two pole 60 amp breaker like this might be a sub panel. panel. It could be an air conditioner. And in fact, I've got a large air conditioner sitting outside here, so I'm suspicious that that might be the one. It is labeled AC, but I'm suspicious of all of these labels because we've got crazy lights, crazy lights. So first, that's a code violation. That each label must be distinct. And then secondly, crazy lights don't tell me if that's the behavior of the lights, or maybe that's the dispersion of lights on that circuit throughout the house. It was too difficult to explain dining room, living room, bedroom, northeast bedroom, southwest bedroom. Functionally, the description couldn't be contained within the label. I'm wondering if that's what that means. Larger, physically larger air conditioners will often correlate to larger breaker sizes. Physically smaller air conditioners will often correlate to smaller breaker sizes. Typically, air conditioners are gonna fall within the 20 to 60 amp range. Now I've got some more 20 amp circuits here. That's likely gonna be kitchen and bathroom power. There's a 15, 15, 15, that's probably gonna be general use lights and outlets like bedrooms, living rooms, etc. Here I've got a two pole 60 amp breaker and it's labeled kitchen sub. Sub for sub panel. So that's gonna be a distinct panel that's being fed off of this and gonna contain circuits of its own. We've got multiple 20 amp breakers. This two pole 20 is kind of interesting. That could be an air conditioner, a pool pump. It could just be a multi-wire branch circuit. That's effectively two circuits that are sharing one neutral. Then I've got more 20 amp breakers here. Two pole 30 says H2O. I'm guessing that's water heater, kind of clever shorthand there, but might be confusing. And this is the main, which is not marked here, but it does say main over here. So this is not a service disconnect because my service is outside on the carriage house and that's the service disconnect. Here, this is just the main, meaning the main shutoff for this electrical panel. Now, one thing to watch out for if you're comfortable is taking the panel cover off carefully and some of these circuits might not be in use. They might be empty breakers. You'll never find those circuits unless you pull the cover off and check. And spare circuits must be identified as such. So a couple of the things I'm gonna do before getting started is one, I wanna confirm that every breaker has a wire connected and I'm not dealing with a breaker that's not in use, trying to find it, wasting time. All these breakers have wires connected. Every breaker is in the on position. I'm gonna snap a picture before I get started. Occasionally, there'll be a circuit that's maybe a spare that's run and it's up in the attic. See, a lot of times when we do a bathroom remodel, for instance, on the second floor, when we're pulling a new 20 amp circuit upstairs in like an older home where there previously was not a dedicated circuit, we'll pull an additional 14 and 12 gauge circuit to the attic, coil up a little extra, put them in a J box so they're properly terminated, and now we've got capacity for an attic finish out down the road. If one of those circuits is here, if there's any indication that was left by the electrician, such as this electrical tape here that says unfinished base. Sounds like a circuit to the unfinished basement. And that's been capped off and left behind. So I'm looking for any identifier such as that. Now be careful, all down the sides of the breakers, it's hot, including these terminals and these terminals all have the potential to deliver a deadly shock. So quick basic anatomy and function of the electrical panel. I've got an insulated screwdriver here. See down the side every hot terminal is a 120 volt terminal and every wire has a rated amperage. In this case between 15 and 125 amps. You might be asking how do I understand what that means? Water is the best analogy. Water and electricity do mix at this point. So the size of my wire is like the size of my pipe. And when I have a pipe that's physically large, that's ampacity. You can think of it like a water hose, right? That's, that's ampacity, the size of the pipe or the wire. So if you see this big wire down here, it's the biggest wire in the panel and it has the highest rating, 125 amps. In a residential panel like this, every terminal is rated 120 volts from terminal 
to neutral or ground. Now it is an improper, since this is not the first disconnecting means, to have these neutrals and grounds combined. That should only be done outside. We've got the panel cover back on. A couple more things. On for breakers is in the center position and off is in the outside position. They should be clearly indicated on every breaker. So this is on, this is off. Occasionally people get confused. Now let me show you what the trip position looks like. Woo! See that's a shorted breaker and now we've got a red flag and it's in that middle position and it's wobbly. See there's some resistance that that's fixed in that position but that's that's tripped and where homeowners have occasionally gotten confused and you've got to rehearse this with them on the phone even though it sounds rudimentary is they're like the breaker won't go on well if there's a faulted breaker you've got to check the cause of the fault before you reset it there's a ton of power that's going to surge through there if you just sit there and try to just reset it and when you reset it you move it to the off position you investigate for cause of fault, and then when fault is cleared, you reset to the on position. Fault is now cleared, back to the on position, red flag goes away, and breaker's nice and tight. Now here's one thing that happens. Occasionally breakers trip, and they don't go to the trip position. So when I'm investigating a panel for a power outage, what I do is I run my finger lightly down the inside, light pressure. And sometimes you'll encounter a breaker that then pops over to that trip position we just talked about. And you, you can turn it off, check for cause of fault, and reset it. Now a breaker that is in the tripped position is off. It's no longer energizing the circuit. All right, so everything is definitely on. We don't have any tripped breakers. It's always good to know exactly where you stand before you start the project. All right, the basic tools I'm using to identify all the circuits in my house are these. I've got my clipboard with, uh, <laughs> I've got to have the pencil with the eraser so that as I'm going through, I'm going to probably get some false reads. I'm going to confirm, I'm going to find that something's changed. I'm going to erase, and I'm going to give myself plenty of opportunity. I've got my Sharpie because I'm going to do a detailed handwritten. Um, you can use Excel and print something up and put it in a panel schedule, but I'm pretty content with this method. I've got a flashlight for dark and hard to reach spaces. I've got a variety of plug-in testers. Well, this is going to do my electrical outlets. I strongly prefer this Klein plug-in tester with a volt readout, and it's going to perform a full diagnostic. If there are any other issues that I encounter while I'm doing the panel labeling and investigating, I'm definitely going to know. This is a little bit more limited, but both test for GFCI function, which is real critical in wet and damp locations. This Klein tool right here, it's about 65 bucks on Amazon. All this is linked in the description, and it comes with these items. Two adapters, one for light sockets, and one for two prong receptacles. And then this third adapter that's got alligator clips. So if you're qualified and comfortable and properly insulated, which these, these clips themselves are, you can clip onto a live circuit and you've got the ability to plug in and find. I'm gonna show you how to use the tool. That plugs into any one of these adapters and you're gonna get a readout on the live circuit. If you're utilizing the light socket function, then you've gotta use both adapters before being able to plug in. And I've got basic screwdrivers. Number two square insulated for taking my panel cover off and checking inside my panel and a large flat head for general purpose. Let's get going. All right, I've got a crusty old outlet down here. I'm gonna do a repair on that. I'm gonna put in a GFCI. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Now I see that the receptacle is wired correctly and I'm gonna go find this receptacle at the electrical panel using my circuit tracer. I will say, if you buy a cheap circuit tracer, you will have no end of frustration. Don't do it, I can't recommend that. So we're at the electrical panel, but this is one of seven in complex. So I don't know if the circuit's here, but I'm gonna go slowly, I'm gonna be patient. It picks up a little bit, you see that tone picks up a little bit. It's not enough to win the day. Ooh, ooh, that's pretty conclusive. Let's see if I get anything else. Ooh, no, no, not quite. Okay, I like that, let's try it. 
I'm gonna start using my coach's clipboard to take copious notes on what I find. And I'm definitely not writing on the panel schedule yet until I've consolidated and verified all my information. And then I'm gonna apply a nice, new, clean set of labels like this. I'm gonna go over what's existing once I've consolidated all the information. But for now, I'm just taking notes. Let me tell you one more thing, panels, are typically numbered. The numbers can be hard to read because this panel is in the inverted fashion, which is code compliant, totally fair. One is down here. So it's one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and so forth, two, four, six, eight, ten, and so forth. Sometimes people get confused and they start going one, two, three, four, five, six. That's not accurate. This is a universal methodology for electrical panels. Follow it. We've got six and we're gonna use cardinal directions. That's east, so we have, we're gonna write half size so we can really fit it in. East, an abbreviation, east basement receptacle. And we're gonna further our investigation of that circuit before moving on to any other circuits. So my outlet that's off is right over there. I'm gonna check washer and dryer, and I'm gonna just check them for power right at the unit. Because these are heavy, fixed, relatively fixed in place appliances because of all the connections on the backside. And what I'm finding is my washer is off. It's on the same circuit. However, my dryer is an electric dryer. An electric dryer pulls a lot of power. So this is gonna be on a two pole 30 amp breaker as a standard, and it is most definitely a distinct circuit. If this was a gas dryer, it would be on a 15 amp plug, like the one we saw, or something similar. And let me say, wire gauge matches breaker size. And if you have trouble with a tripping circuit in your house, you absolutely cannot except in very, very rare circumstances by qualified personnel only upsize the breaker to prevent it from tripping. I'm still in the mudroom and I'm checking over here. I've got a two prong receptacle, so I've utilized my adapter that came with my toner kit. I'm plugged in and obviously right on the other side of the mudroom, different circuit. So I'm gonna have to go through the process of toning the panel again to find that one. And at this point, I'm just gonna go room by room to avoid running a million stairs by the end of the day. I think that's what we're getting. Okay, that's worth talking about. See, it looks like <clears throat> This leg of our panel is feeding that receptacle, but in fact, it's feeding it through this leg of the sub panel upstairs. So check that out, see? That two pole 60, we're pretty sure it's a sub panel just off the kitchen. And that's where we're getting our reading. So that receptacle is gonna have a label that lives in the upstairs panel. So time to keep moving. Before moving on out of the mudroom, we're gonna identify the lights. And I got help from my kids. They turned on all the lights in the house, which is what they love doing anyways. And so in this case, I'm pretty relaxed. I don't have anything in the house that I don't wanna have shut off at this time. And I'm gonna flip through until I find the mudroom lights. And I'm gonna be mindful of any other information I pick up along the way. If I see things, there it is. All right, mudroom lights are distinct from the other adjacent rooms. So I'm gonna capture that on my clipboard as I progress. So there are at least four or five different types of water heaters. In this case, I've got an all electric tank style water heater. And I'm gonna test at this archaic disconnect that's sitting on the wall here. So I'm gonna take my alligator clips. I'm gonna look at the incoming or outgoing wire. There's plenty of opportunity for shock hazard here. So move with caution and I'm gonna clip right on to the electrical components. I can't even quite see that. There I am. I'm expecting that this tank style water heater is gonna be a two pole 30 amp breaker, but I do have multiple two pole 30s. So let's see what we get. We've got the H2O label here. I'm gonna just trace right down here. Okay, that looks to be it. Let's try it. 
A couple different methods and tools you could use to also identify your power is a non-contact voltage detector. Now this is not going to be your most reliable method, but it will chime like that in proximity of power. You get it to sit in there and go flip the breaker. Let's say you don't have an electrical disconnect near your water heater. You can pop either top or bottom element covers off. You can take a flat head screwdriver and remove the four screws. Now that I have the cover off, I want to be careful because the terminals underneath this plastic shield are live. So using an insulated screwdriver, I'm going to just pop it free. Ooh, there it is. And I can use any one of the same methods to confirm that power is live. We're working our way through the basement from the panel, which is in the other room, to the water heater, and now we're going to tone out a basic light. I'm going to use the two part adapter, one, two, and I'm going to screw this tester in in place of the light bulb. And I'm going to tone it out just like we did the receptacle. As you can see, my tester is now live. Let's go test it. We're searching for the light bulb now. And here's another example of a circuit that's found not in this panel, but in the sub panel upstairs. As you're working your way through the house, it's easy to forget about places that you don't use every day and receptacles that are hidden behind things. For instance, I've got this little stand up crawl space and through the labeling process, I don't want to forget to check in tight spaces like this. Furnace, dehumidifier, sub panel, seven of seven. Yeah, it's going to be some work. Since the air conditioner is already running, it's easy to tell when it shuts off. But if it's not running or you don't have a helper, what you can use is this trace tool or a digital multimeter to confirm loss of power. So now we're behind the air conditioner and every air conditioner should have a disconnect. Many of them look just like this. And in that disconnect, there's gonna be a pull out. And in that pull out, there's gonna be two terminals on each side. What you're gonna to wanna to do, if it's wired properly, is connect to the outside set of terminals. So I've extended those alligator plugs, clips, and I'm gonna slip them in there. All right, and now you can see I'm connected. I can use my standard tool to go find the breaker. If I don't have the alligator plugs, but I've got a standard multimeter, I can also use that. I'm gonna put it on volts AC. Then I'm gonna take my probes and I can stick them in there e either way black on right or red on left or vice versa is gonna work just fine. And I'm gonna confirm. Oh, I will say the alligator clips are tough to fit in there. And there I have it, 255 volts AC. Now I've got a clear read whether my air conditioner power is on or off, and I can go identify the circuit. So this is a big power circuit. Like I said, it's physically a large air conditioner. It's probably gonna be on a two pole 40, 50, or 60 amp breaker. Check out my 40, my 30, my 60. Boom. Now what you can expect is that the voltage outside when taking a reading will drop to a nominal zero. It might bounce around with a few millivolts. That's negligible. That will be your indication that power has been turned off. The last item that we have to determine in the mudroom is the dryer. An electric dryer is almost always on a two pole 30 amp breaker. So I'm gonna leave it in the off position. I'm gonna flip my breaker off and then I'm gonna attempt turning it on. And I think that's a gentler method as opposed to turning it on and flipping it off. So now the dryer has become unresponsive. I'm gonna reset the breaker to the on position and I expect, yeah. 
That's an easy one. Confirmed. All right, we're making tracks in the basement. We've identified some outdoor equipment. Now we're moving to the kitchen. I brought in the big guns, kid on duty, Titus James. Titus, what I want you to do, buddy, is I want you to go in order. I've got them breakers I want you to flip, marked one, two, three, four. And that's got something related to the kitchen scribbled on here, so we're gonna check them in order. So when you're ready to turn it off, when I yell to you, you're gonna do one. Oops, I accidentally bumped the one next door. So you're gonna turn off just one breaker, that's going to be number one, and when I yell on, then you can turn it back on. Go ahead and give it a shot. So I'll tell you what number. Yep, it's tough. Push hard. Ugh. Two fingers. Try again. Ugh. Got it. Boom, with a broken arm to boot. Good job. Let's head upstairs. Okay. Now we're upstairs in the kitchen, and that first breaker Titus is going to flip, we think it's the oven, and a large breaker like that is for a dedicated appliance. This is an electric oven. So it's got upper and lower elements and that two pole 40 amp breaker would be just right. Titus, flip breaker number one. Boom, that's it. All right, so I'm gonna put a check mark by the confirmed items. I'm gonna transition from suspected to confirmed. Turn it on, Titus. Boom. All right, number two, go ahead, buddy. Ooh, kitchen lights, confirmed. Check mark. Turn number two back on, buddy. Kitchen receptacle west. I'm gonna get in position. Well, you know, I could just, could just turn this on. Uh, over on this side? Yeah. Ooh, how do you do it? Ah, oh, there it is. All right, Titus, turn off number three. Boom, that's it. It's not the microwave though, but I heard that beep earlier. I wonder if I might know what that is. Turn it back on, Titus. Kitchen receptacle west, confirmed. Titus, can you turn on the one right above number two? Turn it off. That's it, good job, turn it back on. <whistles> Confirmed. One of the courtesy items, if you're an electrician after you've done this, is to offer to reset the clocks for the customer. You would be surprised at how ticked people can be if you don't tell them on the front end. Now you'll have to reset all your clocks and ensure all your appliances are working if you don't tell them on the front end, or at least offer to do that on the back end. And that's another 20, 30 minutes right there, kind of hand holding the customer through the home to make sure everything is just, because sometimes with an older electrical panel, what happens is you flip that breaker back on and it goes to the on position, but truly this can happen. It doesn't actually re-engage the circuit. So now you've got a whole circuit that's off. So you want to verify the off, but you also want to verify the back on. Like I said, older panels, it's not a given. All right, disposal is on. I'm watching the dishwasher because sometimes those are on the same circuit. Some people think that's a code violation. It's not. Titus, number four, buddy. Tell me when it's off. Okay, that one is improperly labeled. So we'll have to keep searching for that. There are two other types of breakers that I want to bring to your attention, and that is AFCI and GFCI breakers. Here we've got AFCI, and you can simply turn it off like you would, or you can hit the test button, and it will simulate an arc fault and send the breaker to the tripped position. To reset, simply turn it all the way to the off position and back on. And that will be the same for a GFCI breaker, which will look just like this, but will be clearly indicated by GF for ground fault or GFCI. Here's a GFCI breaker in an older panel. It looks substantially different, but the thought process is identical. Ooh, that one's not wanting to reset properly. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Uh, look at that, it's going straight to the trip. Oh, 
it held. That breaker is definitely getting worn out. Anytime you don't have crisp on off function, the breaker is beyond its useful life. Time to replace. Unfortunately, the judge did not allow the youngest participant to assist us today. So this is the fastest method of labeling your electrical panel is order some pizza and bring the posse over. Guys, what we're looking for is everybody has their device to test receptacles. Lights, you can see visually. If the light is off, that means that um, switch is also off that's associated with the light. I want you to take all your findings and report them to me. I'm gonna be writing down very meticulously. Let's, re let's uh, recap. That way's north, that way's west, east, south. When you find a receptacle that's off, that's a plug, I want you to say north living room plug off, all right? And make sure that you're careful to report it back to me and I'm gonna be careful to communicate to you because we don't want any errors on the master schedule. Everybody got it? One, two, three. Ooh, something, what was it? That was the light and Lip Entry light? Yes. One of is that also exterior? Yep, it's also out there. Okay. Let's test. We can get a Kitchen is probably not gonna be on that circuit because kitchen plugs are a dedicated circuit. So I'm gonna give you a tip. Come check out here. Maybe in these two Dad, rooms. Dad, living room off. Living room? Yeah. All right. Oh. Living room plugs are off. Dining room light, living room light. Remember, leave all the lights on. Don't flip any switches. South, Ooh, south entry. How about any of these three here? Can I have one of those? That one. There we go. We're good. It's on? On? On. On, on. All right. Lights are separated from plugs. That's convenient. That one's off. Got it. One of these? Yeah. Trade. Can you and Joob's trade? I get this one. She gets Oh, someone had flipped it. It's back on. Joob's don't touch that. Exterior lights are not on that circuit. All right, good job, Jubilee. That's on. How about this one? Did you check that one? Did anyone find anything? Wait, no, you gotta plug it in all the way. Look at this. See, yours works. Right, we're not using that button today. Huh? All right, pull it out. Are Just like trying? real electricians fly, fighting over Klein tools. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we have an exhaustive list of number 10. Let's hit circuit number eight. Ooh. No indication, see what you can find. One. That one right there. Right here. Just that one, not the next one around the no. corner? I checked those. Okay, so that would be East Den Can Wall. Yet? And we're labeling. I've no? All right, didn't find too much on that circuit. We've got a ton of breakers in the house, so there can't be too much on any circuit. All right, this is circuit number six, yo. If something is on a different circuit, no need to test it now. So as we whittle down, it'll go faster and faster. Ready, set. Boom. So we, how do we describe that? All but these two plugs. Uh, so the den is on three receptacle circuits. Oh, that's all in here. No, that's working. 
So we're going to call it West, okay. South, and Southeast end plugs. West, South, and South East den plugs. Oh, and these lights too. South den lights. That light just went off so bright in here. So do we get it right? This this room's on three circuits. 1938 home. We found another. Ooh, Jubilee found something. What'd you find, Amos? Ready, set, new circuit. A few takeaways. What we know now is we have a sub-panel off a sub-panel off a sub-panel, which increases layers of complexity. In the DIN, we have three separate circuits controlling the DIN, so it's complex. I definitely 100% would not have encountered this project without the Klein Tools ET310. This thing's golden and reliable. I highly, highly recommend this right angle adapter for tough to reach spots. I definitely appreciated the digital readout on my Klein multimeter, so I was able to see and encounter if there are any other issues as I was working through the testing process. And incorporating eight kids into panel labeling is not necessarily helpful. I'm recommending two to three adults tops with cell phones on a three-way call to communicate with clarity, precision, and accuracy. In fact, I might go so far as to say do not undertake a panel labeling job in a house of any size at all without the Klein ET310. <laughs> If you've got best practices, comment below and subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money. Goal!